Price, that's the number one technical indicator. You do best by investing for the longer term. If you can't explain what the business is doing, then that is a huge red flag. Some technological change is going to put you out of business. It really is a genuinely extraordinary situation. Hello everyone, I'm Ed Gotham and welcome to Opto Sessions. This is a spotlight episode where we dive into the details of an interesting theme with a special guest. On this show, I welcome Katrina Damanova, part of the business development team at Gemini. Gemini is one of the principal companies in the digital asset space with a very popular exchange and custody product for institutional investors. At Gemini, Katrina focuses on developing partnerships and servicing institutions. Her client base includes digital asset managers, crypto funds, hedge funds, market makers, fintechs, and more. Previously, Katrina was head of product at Copper.io, a custody and prime brokerage for digital assets. We dig into the details on Gemini's institutional offering, the opportunity in DeFi, and how it may transform financial services as we know it. Enjoy. Hi, Katrina. Uh, good to have you on the show. Thanks for giving us some time to talk to you. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, I just wanted to start because obviously this is a this is a special sort of spotlight episode for Opto Sessions where we dig into a particular area of the market that's that's quite topical, etc. So this one's on cryptocurrencies, digital assets. Um, we've had a few people on the show recently, so we've, it's been a, an interesting area, and our listeners have enjoyed hearing about. It, so obviously this one's about that, and just want to get your view on the recent sort of volatility in the market. Um, over the last couple of weeks? What, what's your viewpoint on it? Of course. So in my opinion, the digital asset industry is still at its very, very beginnings. It's like we are witnessing the birth of the internet era. Therefore, any type of volatility is very much expected. What I can, uh, what I can see is that we have to think about the fundamentals. We have to think about the fact that crypto as technology is here to stay. And the fact that Gemini uh, has surpassed $30 billion of assets under management, and we still can see high institutional demand and more adoption of crypto as a new asset class among institutional investors, means that in the future, we'll see that volatility to actually calm down. Because the more corporates, the more funds take long-only strategies, and uh, there will be less sell-offs, and uh, the amplitude of this uh, volatility cycles is going to go down. So I'm still fairly optimistic, and uh, hopefully we will see in another bull run towards the end of the summer. Yeah, excellent. Um, and in terms of what you're seeing in the market, because you've, you've got a very good uh, viewpoint on it, what, what interesting developments are coming into the crypto space at the moment that you're most interested in or Gemini? So I would point out uh, that regulation uh, is something that we have to mention here. So in the UK specifically, we can see developments around regulation of crypto services. Retail and institutional investors alike are now expecting that their digital assets are subject to the same stringent protection as traditional assets. And they expect the same level of security and compliance in crypto as they would expect uh, when they interact with traditional banks. And over the last three to four years, the lack of regulation actually has been the biggest barrier to institutional crypto adoption. And now we can see that FCA is actively addressing this issue. So us, Gemini, we've been in the UK market uh, just over a year, but officially we launched um, eight months ago. And before we went live, we secured an electronic money institution license from the FCA. And we're also one of the few cryptocurrency exchanges and custodians um, that the regulator has approved under the fifth money laundering directive. So currently in the UK, there are over 150 companies which are still on the FCA's waiting list to receive the registration as a crypto asset firm. And hopefully in July, we will see more developments around that. And we will find out whether the regulator will allow these firms to trade under certain restrictions or which players will completely have to cease trading. And the second thing that I'd like to point out is that the market is maturing and consolidating. 
So if you think about it, the first early entrance to the industry, the first early exchange and custodians, these were started out as tech projects by, and they were led by tech teams and they were appealing to crypto enthusiasts and early adopters. These were not aimed for um, traditional financial institutions. And obviously, they were not heavily focused uh, neither on security or compliance. And now we can see that all of these exchanges and custodians, they're learning how to play by the rules as the space is getting more and more regulated. Um, We are going to see a lot of mergers and acquisitions. Uh, in my opinion, in the next year, as uh, more advanced players are going to buy off the technology from smaller players, and um, the industry is going to get consolidated. Another thing is that crypto cannot exist in isolation. So we still have to be able to on-ramp fiat onto exchanges, right? And in order to do that, uh, we'll need partnerships with banks. And the banks that have been around for the last 30 years need to hold crypto firms accountable. And they can't just easily integrate into organizations with simplistic security and compliance programs. Um, And this is why it's such a pleasure for me to work here at Gemini, because we were one of the first crypto native exchanges that was built with security and compliance in mind, merging the tech and uh, finance concerns. So these are the two uh, main things that I can see uh, happening. So that is maturing, consolidation and regulation. Yeah, so it's interesting on that one, because especially from... um a retail investor's point of view as well, the, the, there's a common misconception that regulation is you know, ne- negative for the, for the you know, digital asset space, but actually it brings stability and allows these institutional firms to, to adopt it uh, in, in increasing numbers. So yeah, it's really, really good to see that, that that's moving forward. And it, it's something that takes time as well, isn't it? Because all these institutions have to uh, come up with these new regulations. Uh, it obviously, it all, all takes time and many years. Can you give us an overview of Gemini's uh, retail and institutional offerings? Of course. So as a background, we were founded in 2014 in New York uh, as um, a trust company, and we were founded by Cameron and Tyler Winklevoss. And uh, it's been uh, an incredible journey. So now we provide consumers with a secure and trusted way to buy, sell, and store over 40 cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Ethereum, various DeFi tokens. We have a mobile app for our retail users. We also have the web interface. Um, and uh, we uh, accept deposits uh, in British pounds and euros uh, for UK and uh, European uh, retail customers. And in terms of our institutional offering, uh, we, of course, have the exchange and we also have the custody services. And uh, the infrastructure for institutional clients has been uh, built, sort of uh, borrowing lots of concepts from traditional finance in the sense that we have the clearing and execution services And um, the way we attract institutional clients is that we have built an infrastructure where essentially you can have an audit trail, uh, you would have a sub-account structure, uh, you would be able to manage roles and permissions, you would be able to execute trades uh, seamlessly. Um, So essentially it is the full infrastructure for uh, for investors of uh, various kinds uh, to trade on the exchange. And aside from these core services, we have additional product offerings, uh, such as Gemini Earn, which is at the moment available only in the US. And also we are the investors into Nifty Gateway, and that is the whole NFT space, which I can expand on later. Yeah, sure. I mean, we might as well talk about that now. So the NFT space, what's uh, a lot of people probably don't even know what that is. So can you probably give people a quick overview and how you're involved with it at Gemini? Yeah, of course. Uh, So what are NFTs or NFTs, non-fungible tokens? These are cryptographic tokens that represent a unique asset or good on the blockchain. And they uh, essentially 
a perfect form factor for crypto collectibles, crypto art, and much more. So essentially, it lays foundation for the whole new industry to spring. And um, Nifty Gateway is a service uh, which allows users to purchase NFTs directly with fiat currency using their credit card like as if you were doing an online purchase for arts. And it makes Nifty is accessible to anyone. Um, and um, essentially, it is democratizing art ownership, but it is also allowing artists uh, or creators to get paid for their work uh, by cutting out the middlemen. And I can see that uh, this market is going to bring together retail and institutional investment and um We've seen the boom of uh, Nifty Space around February. And again, I can say that the market is maturing and we have uh, more and more serious projects in this space. Yeah, it's been pretty interesting over the last well, year or so that it's, it, it really got very popular. And there's been uh, numerous, um, I think, uh, the NFL and things like this were involved with sort of uh, creating their own NFTs and um Musicians for sure, but and a lot of celebrities and uh, yeah, famous artists as well. Uh, so it'll be interesting how that how, how that goes forward. Um, just taking it back to yourself, Katrina. Um, can you take us through like your main milestones in your career to date? Like you've got quite an interesting background from the financial industry, I, I believe, uh, and startups as well in the crypto space. It'd be great to hear what you've what you've done to date. Of course. Uh, so essentially, I somehow managed to combine two career paths in one uh, and then kind of manifested all at Gemini. So here at Gemini, I am part of the business development team, uh, which is uh, looking after institutional clients, uh, mostly uh, in uh, the UK and Europe. My own client base here is um traditional uh, hedge funds, uh, crypto native funds, um, various corporates, miners, wealth management companies. So it's a very wide range of clients who have very different types of uh, trading strategies. These are either long only or these are statistical arbitrage uh, trading strategies, but all can be uh, serviced out of Gemini. And how did uh, this whole journey start? So I started my career uh, on a trading floor uh, at a bulge bracket investment bank, and I've been doing fixed income. And then I moved to structured products and very complex derivatives. And even back then, I realized that in order to service uh, institutions, a bank has to have very good technology, which underpins all its trading activity, because otherwise your uh, trades don't get cleared, you have counterparty risk, then you have like uh, issues with assets not being delivered, et cetera, et cetera. So um, at the peak of my career in structured products, I decided to uh, leave that and uh, join the startup world. And I was working at Yibota, um in London, uh, which uh, was a project where we were building core banking platforms uh, to revolutionize traditional uh, legacy systems. And uh, slowly but surely, I became more involved in product development. Uh, so then I was hired uh, to Copper Crypto Custody as head of product and kind of um, after immersing myself into the whole crypto business, I uh, joined Gemini. And the biggest pleasure I have right now is that now I'm servicing very similar, essentially sometimes the same clients that I used to service back uh, during my trading floor years. Uh, and this is essentially the manifest that uh, those wealth managers who are buying structured products or fixed income uh, sort of products, uh, I would say six years ago, these are the exact same clients who are now trying to enter uh, the crypto sphere, and for me, it's just uh, you know it's quite quite mind boggling. But um, you know, it, it's it's a great great sign that crypto is here to stay. Yeah, I suppose. I mean, that's incredibly interesting. I mean, it's a good time probably to talk about Gemini Custody, uh, the institutional grade crypto storage sort of offering you're uh, promoting to these these institutional sort of clients. Um, you hit that milestone recently, 30 billion in crypto under custody, which obviously is a huge uh, target you've hit. Um, can you take us through Gemini Custody and why it's attractive to these hedge funds, asset managers who want exposure to crypto? Why do they choose this as the way to get exposure to it? Mm -hmm. Of course. So first of all, as I mentioned 
Regulation is key here. So we're a qualified custodian and we're licensed to store over 30 different uh, cryptocurrencies on customers' behalf in our proprietary cold storage system. So we offer the ability to trade assets in cold storage instantly on the exchange. And institutional investors can check balances. They can initiate withdrawals and transfer assets. Uh, you can create uh, and manage multiple accounts uh, with unique crypto addresses so on the on the blockchain. So that means that you have exactly uh, the same setup of our crypto custody services that uh, that would mirror the experience that they would have in traditional uh, finance. And um, also we have the whole audit trail and uh, ability to download reports. So uh, auditors uh, can also get a direct and secure way into the crypto assets under custody to confirm balances, transactions, and other activity. Something to mention is we have an insurance coverage for all crypto held online in our exchange wallets. And uh, there is also uh, additional cold storage coverage uh, with uh, leading insurance providers that uh, customers can benefit from. And of course, we have our Gemini clearing uh, on top of our exchange services. So what does it mean? Uh, that is a fully electronic clearing and settlement solution for off-exchange crypto trade. So everything that's happening OTC is going to get cleared, uh, ensuring a timely settlement and mitigating counter to party risk. So why, for example, a hedge fund would prefer uh, to choose Gemini over some other custody provider or even like an exchange venue? So when a hedge fund, for example, is trying to raise capital and when they speak to the investors, they have to make sure that the client funds do not uh, disappear. And, uh, you know, there is the minimal risk of a cybersecurity attack or hack or, you know, any, any sort of chance of client funds to get uh, compromised. And this is the safety net that we provide. And say, if you're a traditional financial institution and you're just considering uh, crypto uh, as an alternative investment service or like uh, some form of um, a new underlying that you'd like to buy, we essentially take care of the technology and the security. So we, uh, in our uh, segregated cold storage custody, we take care of the private keys. So uh, you do not need to teach your uh, team of bankers how to use crypto custody service, uh, which buttons to push and which to, how to use the technology, because we already do it for our clients. That's why, essentially, we were proud uh, to be the custodian for all the Canadian ETFs. We're proud to be servicing uh, the biggest names on, on Wall Street and um, equal uh, counterparts uh, in UK and Europe. We hope you're enjoying the episode. For interviews like this every Thursday, subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. And while you're there, make sure you give us a star rating and leave guest suggestions along with any other feedback in the review section. Now, back to the show. No, yeah, very interesting. Because yeah, one thing a lot of people uh, probably don't realise is even though they're probably quite quite secure, exchanges like Binance, Coinbase, etc., are, are obviously you know people can hack the exchanges if, if it, it, you know it's unlikely for some of them because they've probably got quite secure sort of systems in place. But anything that's when when it's attached to the internet, there is a risk, isn't there, involved? Indeed, very much so. What my next question was: the cold storage is when you're storing stuff offline, I believe. Yeah. The question I have was where. Uh, there's a, there's a sort of security you have in place, I and mean, you know where where are these wallets uh, stored, etc. If you could describe all of that, that, that would be really interesting, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, so, in terms of our um, custody, um, if you are using our segregated custody solution, uh, that means that your digital assets are stored entirely offline in auditable addresses. Assets are held uh, in our proprietary cold storage system, um, and uh, you would have same-day withdrawals and instant access uh, to assets if you'd like to trade on our exchange. And essentially, we use um, HSMs. So what are these? These are hardware secu uh, security modules. Um, these uh, are devices on which we generate, store, and manage the private keys. 
Um, and uh, there are different ratings uh, that have been implemented by the U.S. government in terms of how can you rate those cryptographic devices. So ours are of the highest level. On top of that, our HSMs are stored in guarded, monitored, and access-controlled facilities, which are geographically distributed. Um, that means that there is the whole physical security around this as well. So if that answers the question. Yeah, yeah, it does. So essentially, uh, in layman's terms, it's, it, you're putting the, the digital currencies on a sort of portable hard drive that's obviously a lot more high spec. Than that. They're very non-portable, very non-portable. So mm -hmm. HSMs are kept in locked cages inside uh, sort of designated areas uh, in data centers, which are distributed geographically in the US. And we have a special team, uh, which has various sort of um, levels of access. And for example, no one person can uh, even like withdraw uh, a private key or use the private key or something like that. It is something like a portable hard drive that's stored. It, obviously, you're not, someone's not walking around with these, but they are in, you know, sort of lock and key in, in some sort of safe somewhere. Indeed, indeed. Yeah. yeah, very interesting. So, and that's the level of security these firms need is what we're saying to ensure, yes. to, you know, absolute minimum risk of something happening indeed indeed because if you think about the value that is locked you know in the etfs that we uh look after yeah yeah, yeah I, I can see why you need it yeah it's very interesting um are you able to share any of the sort of uh, clients that you work with uh, of course so uh, that is uh, there would be like blockfi uh in terms of traditional institutions that is btg pactual uh, that is State Street. Uh, so we uh, have most of our clients' names on our website, of course. Uh, and then um, we have been built, you know, uh, in order to service the Wall Street. So if you think, for example, about the API connectivity of our exchange as a standalone product, not just the custody, uh, we have uh, not just like the REST and WebSockets API, we also have fixed API connectivity, which literally requires us to um, have wires uh, in the same uh, Equinix data center as uh, the New York Stock Exchange, uh, which means that we are, uh, even from the technology standpoint, are able to service institutions which are deeply embedded into the systems. Obviously, you've got a really good perspective of how the institutional sort of interest is at the moment. How's everything going? Like, are, are the, uh, Is it growing at a fast rate still? Um, what, and what's driving that? So what I can see is that uh, this year is really crucial for institutional adoption. Uh, we are seeing more and more institutions um, considering this asset class, and we can see more corporates uh, meaningfully locking parts of their balance sheets uh, into digital assets as an alternative asset class, which is both a hedge against inflation as well it is an asset class uh, which is a non-sovereign type of currency. Um, so I think that is quite important to note. Then the whole DeFi tokens and the whole DeFi ecosystem. Well, um, I would say that uh, crypto and digital assets, it is essentially some form of an alternative investment uh, which would represent an asset class which is similar to, say, venture capital because a lot of uh, the projects, uh, a lot of uh, new blockchains, these are also great companies. So if you invest in their tokens and uh, you would have great fundamentals, it means that you are essentially uh, generating returns uh, which are not correlated to the traditional markets. And also you are involved in, in the growth of some uh, very exciting tech projects. Uh, and I think that now more and more institutions understand this concept and there is more institutional adoption happening. Uh, just to point out, uh, what I mentioned about um, crypto asset class, 
you know, be in uh, something which doesn't correlate with traditional markets. Now this is also uh, accessible to retail investors, which I find quite exciting because normally the barriers to entry into VC, they're very, very high. So uh, retail has always been locked out uh, of investing uh, into exciting projects like that. And now uh, this is really democratizing um you know, ability uh, to earn, uh, you know, interest and extra income and just investments. So let's talk about DeFi then. Can you give us a broad definition of DeFi? And because lots of people have different understanding, I think, of, of what it is and because it's such a new space. And it'd be interesting to get the understanding from your perspective, basically. Of course. So DeFi is short for decentralized finance, and it is an umbrella term for a variety of financial applications in cryptocurrency or blockchain geared towards disrupting financial intermediaries. So DeFi draws inspiration from blockchain and it allows several entities to hold copy of a history of transactions, meaning it is not controlled by a single central source. So DeFi is distinct because it expands the use of blockchain from a simple value transfer to more complex financial use cases. For example, um, you could have examples of DeFi apps um, that are decentralized exchanges like Uniswap, which do not hold you onto your funds to execute trades. Um, then you can have Compound, which is an example of a decentralized peer-to-peer lending platform where users can earn interest or borrow assets against collateral. Then you could have liquidity pools um, featured in apps like Balance and Curve. And uh, this is pioneer in the sector of uh, collectivized trading pools. So this is a very new, uh, new and interesting space. Um, and the DeFi revolution is really coming into bloom, um, and it represents uh, the possibility for permissionless, bankless alternatives uh, to the legacy financial system. And what the main benefits of decentralized finance over traditional finance are sort of reducing costs. Is that, is that right? Overall, the end user, what they're going to get is it will bring down the cost of lots of these things that, you know, whether it's loans, um, insurance, etc. Is that what it will be? Uh, indeed, it does have this potential. So the great promise is that consumers are going to have greater choice, independence, and opportunity in financial services. So DeFi has this um, sort of uh, vision that it can help to bank the unbanked. And um, DeFi is essentially... Um, it is um, not using any custody providers, uh, so you would be able to hold on to your funds uh, when you are uh, participating in the ecosystem. Um, and um, DeFi platforms operate with no central authority. Uh, so um, by employing self-executing smart contracts, um, is, this uh, allows consumers to participate uh, without the, new, the use uh, and need uh, for intermediaries. Yeah. And obviously, because it's a, it's been a, it's a new uh, innovation, even in for the crypto world. Um, is there more risk or opportunity for traders in the volatility that these tokens have at the moment? Because some of them are extremely volatile. So, in my opinion, um, DeFi has been very much retail focused um, for the last year or so, and now we're seeing more and more institutional investors uh, showing interest uh, in this technology. The problem is, however, the access to Web3, the access to the DeFi ecosystem, because so far, the solutions that they have been on the market, like MetaMask, they are retail focused, or they require um, very tech savvy uh, users. Um, so you would need to hook up your browser extension to some form of uh, wallet. Ideally, it would be a segregated wallet. Ideally, it would be uh, a custody solution uh, which fits the purposes of institutional investors. And there haven't been really such good alternatives uh, on the market. However, uh, this is currently being developed. So I would say at uh, the end of the year, we're going to see uh, more, a more adoption of DeFi projects by institutions. And um, what I've noticed is that 
uh, traditional banks, uh, traditional wealth managers, they haven't heard of DeFi, but they heard of high interest rates and ability to uh, earn high interest rates, uh, say like in compound projects. Therefore, um, I have uh, received uh, questions about DeFi from this uh, these types of uh, institutions. Um, something to mention is the DeFi ecosystem at the moment exists on the Ethereum blockchain with Ether being the universal currency. However, we're seeing more blockchain networks like EOS, Polkadot, and others uh, to roll out DeFi platforms of their own. And the moment that happens, we're going to see uh, smaller gas fees, uh, better transaction um, uh, sort of uh, speed, things like that. And uh, this uh, this whole DeFi story is evolving um, just in front of us. Uh, so I would say that this time next year is going to be some other time and for other milestones. And then everyone is waiting patiently for the rollout of Ethereum 2.0 later this summer. Uh, so um, let's just wait and see. Yeah, it's very interesting to see that the main thing that's drawn them in so far is the the ability to earn interest on your your crypto holdings, basically, which is probably one of the biggest use cases for it at the moment uh, that you see in the market. You've actually got a similar product that's not DeFi, um, but Gemini offers. Are you able to give us some, uh, some just an overview of what that is? Yeah, of course. That is our famous Gemini Earn program. And that um, is currently available in the US and uh, in Asia. And uh, this um, allows consumers uh, to earn up to 7.4% interest rates on cryptocurrencies uh, that uh, they have in their Gemini Earn account. Um, That is much, much higher than the national interest rates, uh, of course. And um, that is available for 32 different cryptos that we support. Um, And um, essentially what we do is we calculate the interest daily and we pay it out uh, to the same customer's accounts. And then uh, we take all these funds that uh, the clients have uh, deposited with us and then we lend them out to institutional lending partners. And then the money circulates back into the system um, being, you know, uh, loaned out uh, to funds and crypto hedge funds uh, so they can benefit from uh, greater uh, leverage and capital efficiency. Mm. And what what are the main concerns that institutions come to, to you about DeFi and when thinking about investing in it? So as I mentioned, uh, it is the ability to reach out to Web3. It is the ability uh, to Mm. access uh, the ecosystem by itself, uh, because at the moment, most of the technical solutions, uh, they have been geared towards retail. Got you. But please do watch uh, the space because we are working on various technical solutions internally, uh, which I can't talk about this uh, too much now, but uh, we are considering. So there are some things on our roadmap uh, to watch out for. Excellent. Well, thank you very much, Katrina. Um, is, where, where can people follow the developments at Gemini and, and look into more about the products? Uh, and even, have you got a blog as well or something like this that, that they can uh, learn more about the space? Indeed, we have uh, our blog. There is lots of good information on the website. We're providing some market commentary and very interesting uh, insights to the market. So that is Gemini website. Uh, we post you know, things on LinkedIn. And uh, for our UK clients, specifically for UK institutional clients, uh, we organize in a uh, sort of um, some events and breakfasts. Uh, so if you have uh, some specific questions, reach out to our business development team uh, in London. That is me, Katrina and uh, Stephanie, and we will be able to answer all your questions. Perfect. And do you have anything else you'd like to finish with before we uh, wrap up the interview? So it doesn't matter, in my opinion, uh, whether the price of Bitcoin is going to go higher, whether it's going to be adopted as the digital gold. Um, or whether there is going to be more regulation in this space. Um, It is not about which asset uh, class or which blockchain is going to win. It is all about the blockchain technology, the distributed ledger technology, which is here to stay. Um, Because 
Imagine if we have uh, traditional financial institutions adopting blockchain technology, um, that is going to cut costs for clearing um, sort of all of the cross-border transactions, payments, et cetera, et cetera. And finally, one day we're going to see you know, uh, traditional exchanges, hopefully one day, uh, trading stocks, not just from nine to five, but 24-7, essentially the way it should be. Yeah, that'd be, I mean, it's incredible, really, the, the, the rate of change that the, all these things are coming. Um, so, yeah, that, that's really interesting to, to see it from your perspective. And thanks very much for the time you've given us to give us an overview of, of everything. Um, we'll wrap it up there. Thanks very much, Katrina. Have a good rest of the day. Thank you. Thanks for listening, everyone. Just a quick note before we sign off. If you're looking for an easily digestible daily update on the markets, this might be of interest. Opto Updates is our short newsletter sent every day during the trading week, giving you a bulleted list of the top seven stories from the global stock markets. We've done the hard work for you, highlighting relevant opportunities and trends. And in addition, we'll also keep you notified of any new products, stock reports or webinars from the Opto world. If you're interested, sign up using the link in the show notes. And thanks also to Co-Fruition for consulting on and producing the show. Until next time.